All right, so the first conic section that we look at is the parabola. Okay? So the setup for the parabola is this. We have the parabola here in red. This is our curve. Okay? And the condition on the parabola is that there are two pieces of the construction. There is this line called the directrix and a point called the focus. And the requirement is that the parabola is the set of all points so that the distance from any point on the parabola to the focus is equal to the distance from the parabola to the directrix. So those two distances should be equal. My drawing is not perfect. They don't quite look the same, but you know, they're pretty close. Okay, um, and then down here, right, there's one particular point on the parabola right here. This point is called the vertex, okay? And so the vertex is going to be this point that is, is sort of directly between the focus and the directrix. And there is some distance there, which we might call P, okay? The distance between the focus and the vertex and the distance between the directrix and the vertex, okay? So we want to describe this parabola in terms of equations, right? So we want to get equations involving x and y that describe this thing. So we need to introduce a coordinate system, okay? Now, the parabola has this natural axis of symmetry passing through the vertex and the focus. It's symmetric about that line. Um, we also have this line here perpendicular to that axis of symmetry passing through the vertex. So the vertex is a great place to locate our coordinate system. And the way I've drawn it, maybe we call this x, we call this y, right? Um, in the textbook, the other orientation is used, right, where the, uh, the parabola sort of opens upwards away from the x-axis, but you can do it either way. You'll, you're using the opposite relationship between x and y. It's good to sort of see both ways, I suppose. So let's do it this way. All right. So if we introduce our coordinate system with the vertex at the origin, what what can we say? How do we describe things, right? Well, we can actually now locate things. We say, what is the focus? The focus is now at the point. Well, um, x is equal to p, y is equal to 0, right? Because that's the coordinate system we've set up. So the focus is at p0. The directrix is the opposite side of the y-axis, right? Distance of p in the other direction. So the directrix is just y is equal to p, okay? So if I have a point x, y on my parabola, what can I say? Um, well, on the one hand, the distance is just going to be, it's going to be the distance between x and the y-axis and then the y-axis in there. So the distance is going to be x subtract minus p. So it's going to be x plus p, right? If we wanted to account for more general orientations, like maybe a parabola might also open the other way, then we might want an absolute value in there to guarantee things are positive. But at least the way I've drawn it, this is already a positive value, right? Um, p is positive, x is positive, and that works out. Uh, we have that. On the other hand, d is the distance from here to there. So d is going to be the square root of x minus p squared plus y squared, right? Okay, right, x minus p, y minus zero. So these should be equal. So square root of x minus p squared plus y squared should be equal to x plus p. See what happens if we square both sides. We get, and let's expand the bracket while we're at it. So x squared minus 2xp plus p squared plus y squared. Get rid of the squared on that side. And we square this side. x squared plus 2xp plus p squared. Okay. And now we can see that there's some cancellation that goes on. x squared, x squared, p squared, p squared. Okay. And what we actually get is simply we get y squared is equal to 4px. 
we can write it like that, okay? Um, or you could write it as x is equal to 1 over 4p times y, okay? Now, if we had set things up so that the parabola opened vertically rather than horizontally, we just swap the roles of x and y here. y would be 1 over 4p times x, okay? You get the same result. Um, so that's the equation for a parabola that has its vertex at the origin. If you want to generalize, so we want to consider, well, what happens if we move the vertex somewhere else, right? So if we, if we move to, say, vertex at, say, hk, right? So we have to shift x and y by those values. So x minus h would be 1 over 4p times y minus k, right? So you can, you can just shift simply like that, and you get the result, okay? All right, and we could rearrange it if we needed to rearrange it, right? x is equal to 1 over 4p, add the h to the other side. Um, okay, so this is what you get if you're opening to the right. If you were opening to the left, then you do have to kind of account for, you know, there, there are sign factors that you have to fit in. Um, and basically, you know, if you're, if you're opening the other way, you have to worry more about, like, you know, sign factors, extraneous solutions, things like that. But you can also just say, hey, x needs to be negative, you know. Um, oh, sorry, I lost a square. Square. There it is, okay. All right. Um, if it was opening to the left, well, x should be negative. And so then, I mean, y squared is always positive, p is positive, right? This thing is always positive. So if it was opening to the left, you would need a minus sign in there, right? And if it was opening upwards, you would have y equal to 1 over 4p times x squared. Opening downwards, again, put the minus sign in, right? So we have all these variations. So we can do parabolas opening left, right, up, down. Um, we don't do parabolas at funny angles because, again, that would require us to uh, introduce cross terms with x times y. Um, it's not that you can't do it, it's just that we want to keep things simple, so we'll just look at those four possibilities.